Bobby's statistic. So this is our call. Is this? This is our first uh, video. So our call is uh, statistic for everybody everywhere. So today we are going to start the channel's first video. That is introduction to statistic. And also maybe later we'll discuss every section in statistic and also maybe uh, i'll show up that all so mathematical calculation and uh, and also maybe later we'll discuss some uh, application in based on our programming for sas programming and also some statistical packages for sdss and uh, minicap and even for excel too so in this case in this presentation first we are going to discuss some introduction so in this case we will discuss some important definitions and type of st statistics and also we will discuss the definition population samples so those are actually popular definitions first you should be understand the definition and then type of data so mainly we can divide it two types of data and also we can divide the the data may be based on level of measurement and then why sampling why we use the sampling in statistics and also we'll introduce the data collection method and finally we'll discuss sampling method so in this section we'll discuss uh, six important sampling method we have there are several types of sampling method but in this section just to discuss important sampling methods and also maybe i'll provide some snapshot so you can easily understand through the pictures uh, that uh, types of sampling method uh, that's why the sampling is very important in statistical data analysis all right first definition data so what's the data data is just observations such as measurement gender survival response measurement mean height or weight for students marks and gender gender type of gender may be male or female and survival responses yes or no so these are just data so statistics so statistic is the science of gaining knowledge of fact often by using sample data and often the decision are made under uncertainty so in statistical data analysis most of the situation will use our sample data for our all statistical calculation then maybe finally we will make a conclusion based on that sample that your conclusion present for general population so actually in this case this statistical this main discipline of this statistics so first uh, how to collect the data and then how to organize the data and then how to analyze the data and finally make a conclusion from the data so this is the standard steps in statistics so maybe this different different situation we will use different different analyzer method so we have several analyze method and initially collect the data so in this section just we will discuss that how to collect the data and also uh, how to organize the data so maybe following sh chapters following sections we'll discuss how to organize the data and how to analyze the data and finally how to make a conclusion from the data uh, next type of st statistics so mainly we can divide it two types of statistics so first one descriptive statistics and second one inferential statistics so descriptive statistics mean refer to the method for organizing the data and summarizing the data so just only organizing and summarizing so in this case that is we call this descriptive statistics and some of the textbooks use summary statistics that is also maybe descriptive statistics and second one inferential statistics so inferential statistics mean refer to the method of estimating and drawing conclusion so estimation and drawing conclusion with the population based on the information contained in sample data so that is we call this is inferential statistics
so maybe first uh, to set up videos maybe we'll discuss display statistics and then maybe we'll discuss in print yet statistics so next definition and what is the population what is the sample and also we will discuss what's the parameters what's the statistics so these are these uh, actually these uh, definitions are very important so you should be understand the definition what is population how to sample so how to define that population parameter how to define that sample statistics so those are very important first population the complete collection of all individual to be studied so that is we call population the collection is complete in the sense that it includes all of the individual to be studied so for example scores of people measurement and so on a uh, simple example may be suppose if you consider uh, average height of u.s people so that is population so usually this population is too large so and also second so census means collection method of data from every member of population suppose if you can the any data analysis case if you can see the every individual in that population so that's what we should be called there is census so sample so sample means sub collection of members selected from population so this is that population this is the sample so actually the sample just yes, we randomly choose that sample from this population so actually this sample is um, sub collection of the population so that means this is subset of population so and also usually we denote it as big n as population and simple n as sample so this is standard notation and also maybe later we will use it notation uh, in our slides or in our presentation so actually in this section this population definition and sample definitions are very very important so this is the simple example suppose you are president of MNSU MNSU is one of the university so the population or MNSU students so it is look like maybe the size maybe 15,000 or 20,000 and sample all MSS students checking the class in the College of Engineering and Technology. So this is just uh, in this case is the sample is that population. So in this case this is all MNS students taking class in CSCT. So this is subset of all MNS students. So in this study this is the population this is the sample. And also so suppose you are head of the mathematics department so this situation this population all MNSS students taking particular class state 154 course and there's a sample in all MNSS students taking uh, mr modern class so this is one of the particular class so the other division will be population size should be 400 or 500 and sample should be 30 or 25. so this is also in the example so i believe you, you can easily understand through this example uh, what's the difference between population and sample okay next parameter a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of the population so in this case the characteristic mean so mean or average or proportion or variance or standard deviation or range so the, those are characteristics so suppose if you consider population average or population mean or population standard deviation or population variance, so those are we called parameters and also maybe later we will introduce that notation too so and also usually population parameters are unknown but fixed so we can estimate that population parameters from sample so later we will discuss that how to estimate the population parameters so that's why you have to present your final conclusion for general population okay and statistic so statistic mean numerical measurement describing some characteristic of sample so earlier previous slide 
we have discussed that parameter. So parameter means characteristic of population. So in this case, that characteristic of sample we call statistic. So characteristic mean, you know, population mean or population share division of population variance. So those are we call parameter. So similarly here, sample mean sample standard deviation and sample variance or sample range. So those are we called statistic. Okay. Next type of data. So in this case, first, uh, uh, usually we have two different method for uh, divide the type of data. So, so first method, may look, we can divide two types of data. It is qualitative data and quantitative data. So qualitative data means numer not numerical data and attribute or categorical data. So that is we call this qualitative and quantitative data, numerical data. So just yes, your values, maybe your output or your samples, maybe some numerical values. Uh, or quantitative data or numerical data. So that consists of numbers represent count or measurement. So that means maybe possible answers or possible outcomes in some numerical values. Example, the length of time is take for light bulb to burn out. So in this case, the possible answers may be 5,000 minutes or 6,000 minutes. So that is answer maybe some numerical values. And second example, a question goose is given in a math class, the number of character and goose on a student quiz. So that is maybe possible answer 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or up to 5. And also the ages of respondent. So that is also numerical. So that is quantitative data. So next you are going to discuss about qualitative data. So some of the tags we use qualitative data mean attribute data or categorical data. That consist of names or labels representing categories. So in this case, your data's values not numerical. So just different different category or different that means this is qualitative, not quantitative. Remember the great genders, male or female, of professional athlete. And season of birth, spring, summer, fall. So these are not numeric. And also another good example, a person's social security number. Maybe some think about that social security number is numeric. It is not true. This social person's social security number is one of the unique identity for you so that is just actually there is label for you so there is actually qualitative not quantitative that's very important mm, moreover we can divide the quantitative data uh, for the we describe two types of discrete type and continuous type so that's quantitative data so you know quantitative data in just numerical values so result when the number of possible values is either finite number or countably finite number so that is maybe the possible values should be integer so that means 0 1 2 3 up to infinity countable infinity so that is discrete type data. So you have output values or your samples are discrete values, not any decimal point. So that type of data is we call discrete data. The number of eggs that can be so these possible answers may be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And also second example, the number of questions that participant ask during a research study. So these also may be your answer maybe should be integer so this type we call discrete type and second continuous type data result from infinitely many possible values that correspond to some continuous scale that harbors a rich values without gaps interruption or jumps so actually in this case you have possible values any decimal point so infinitely many tests 
passive answers. For example, the amount of milk that cow produces. So maybe that answer, maybe you can, if you identify the exact value, 2.34315234 or something. So that's current point A. So in this case, the value is not any integer. So it is the sum decimal point. So infinitely many possible answers. So this type we call continuous type data. So the length of time it takes for the light bulb to burn. So actually this time also maybe we can try maybe 5000 minutes to 60, 50 seconds and some millisecond or something. So that means then possible answers may be finally many possible. So these are type uh, just numerical data and just we divided the numerical data or quantitative data just we divided discrete type and continuous type. So first you have to if you identify discrete or continuous you have to make sure your data should be numerical or quantitative not qualitative okay and next another type of data so we can divide the type of data based on level of measurement so another way to classify the data is to use levels of measurement so we have important four level of measurement so in this uh, presentation also we'll discuss based on that four important level of measurement so first ordinal type nominal type and interval type and finally ratio type so we can divide the data based on that level of measurement this about nominal level of measurement so characteristic by data that consists of names label so actually the nominal data must be qualitative data not quantitative so in this case the data cannot be arranged in an ordering scheme so we cannot write any order low to high or high to low just only categories so this type of data nominal data so and also uh, you don't forget this nominal type of data must be quality qualitative data not quantitative okay so for example survive response so yes no undecided so we cannot write any order and blood type the number of births by day of the week and also maybe brand of motorbike brand of cars so we cannot write any order so this type data we call nominal type data and second Ordinal, ordinal level of measurement involve data that can be arranged in some order, but difference between data values either cannot be determined or meaningless. So actually this is also qualitative data, but in this case we can write any order, low to high or high to low. And same time, the difference between two sample or two data is meaningless. For example, horse grade. So grade A, B, C, D, F. So we can write any order, maybe increasing or decreasing order. And also same time, if you calculate the difference between two grades, that is meaningless. For example, B minus A, that is meaningless. And five point agreement, strongly disagree, disagree, no option agree strongly agree so we can write that order in increasing uh, that agreement level or decreasing that agreement level and type of drug usage so non infrequent moderate frequent so in this case also we can write some order so these types of data we call ordinal type so earlier we discussed that first type nominal type so nominal type also qualitative data but that's the division we cannot write any ordering scheme but in this case ordinal type data is also qualitative data but we can write any order in increasing or decreasing and third 
data so in table left shape level of measurement so this is also like an ordinate level with the additional property that difference between any two data values is meaningful so however there is no natural starting point zero starting point where the none of the quantity is present so for example yes so in this case years thousand two thousand thousand seven seven six eight thousand four ninety two so we can calculate some difference between two years five years difference or six years difference or hundred years different so that is meaningful but earlier if you calculate the, the grading if you calculate the two different grading between a and b so that is meaningless but in this case the difference also meaningful and same time in this case suppose if you calculate any ratio value that is meaningless suppose if you calculate some ratio between two years that is meaningless so maybe in practically maybe you can easily identify uh, you can that is data maybe this interval type data suppose if you calculate two datas between uh, two datas or two sample values that is meaningful so that situation you can go and that is interval level of measurement and temperature of the ocean at various and also here important this no natural zero starting point so that means that temperature may be zero degrees celsius so that means that is one of the measurement not that is none of the uh, quantity in temperature that is meaning less and also these are just an example and last finally final level of measurement ratio the interval level with additional property that there is also natural zero starting point we are zero indicated none of the quantity is present at the same time the value that this difference in ratio also meaning full so example price of college textbooks zero dollars mean no cost absolutely free and hundred dollars will cost, cost twice as much as fifty dollars books so in this case that difference and ratio also meaning full so this ratio level measurement and also I also given some additional examples so you can easily understand through the example so this is that your nominal level of measurement so we have, we have some several types of examples so maybe you can easily understand through this example so ordinary level and interval level and finally ratio level and also in this case I would like to notice some important uh, examples so nominal case uh, nationalities and nominal case nationality mean maybe different different nationalities and also ordinal case ranking of tennis players so maybe some of the students think about the ranking of tennis players with numerical data that is strong so this is rank so maybe that uh, maybe it is possible to be first second third or maybe we can rank one two three so that is just labels okay so and this is also ordinal and also temperature is level of interval level of measurement and these are just ratio level of measurement so i believe maybe you can easily understand through this example how to identify the nominal data or ordinal data or interval data or ratio data okay next why sampling so why we used sampling in statistics so what's the major advantages of in sampling so cost is lower data collection is faster accuracy and quality of the data is high so actually the sample maybe you know in population always is larger values so large number of individuals so that situation suppose if you collect the data from the population you have to spend a lot of money and also a lot of time but in this case suppose if you consider the sample then maybe cost is very low and also maybe you can collect the, the sample data from the sample within a day or within a week and also the accuracy and quality also high because uh, in this case maybe sample size may be usually in the same or size maybe you know, 100 or 300 or something
uh, and also I'd like to discuss that correlation and casualty so and also we will briefly discuss about later in regression section we'll discuss that correlation definition and how to calculate that correlation between the two variables so just in this case in this chapter just I'd like to introduce that correlation and casualty so concluding that one variable cause the another variable and in fact that variables are linked some of the situation we have some relationship between the two variables for example suppose if you consider mm, two variables uh, volume of ice cube and temperature so temperature is one of the variable volume of ice cube and the variable so that situation suppose this temperature increase that volume of ice cube is decreased so that situation we have that negative relationship between the two variable two variables is that right so that's the division we call that is correlation we have direct the sum relationship between the two variables so that is what we call correlation so two variable may seem linked and also in the example the smoking and pulse rate so this relationship called correlation so I cannot conclude that one causes the others uh, but maybe let me maybe briefly discuss about that correlation calculation and also how to effect that correlation in your data analysis so next data collection method so there are several types of data collection methods so in the study we will introduce that important two data collection method First, basic collecting data statistical method are driven by the data that we collect so we typically obtain data from two distinct sources uh, there is observational study and experimental study so experimental study is very popular in medical field and also observational studies also we use that is that is depend on the situation of your analysis study is just observing and measuring specific characteristics without attempting to modify the subject being studied the example is study of accident rate in urban areas so in this case first you have to collect the data so you have to observe uh, some during time period that means in this case you have to observe mean you have to count how many accidents occurs in given time period in that particular urban area so then maybe you can move that to analysis so first step you have to collect the data so in this case in this strategy we call this observational study and second we are going to discuss about experimental, experimental study apply some treatment and then observe it is effect on the subject so subject in experimental experiment are called experimental units so for example a clinic give drug to group of 10 patient and a, a flash go to another group of 10 patient to find out if the drug has an effect on the patient illness so in this case just we use one the 10 patient group is the our experimental group and another group is the flash group so in this case this is this study is called experimental study so just apply some treatment so maybe some of the situation the treatment should be same sample size maybe sometimes it is maybe different sample size and also this is very popular in medical field sampling method so why already we discussed why we use sampling in data analysis so in this section we are going to discuss how to select the sampling method so we have there are so many sampling methods is available nowadays but in this section yes we will discuss important six sampling methods so first we will introduce some definitions so simple random sample so simple random sample are and subject selected is such a way every possible sample of size in case same chance between the session but maybe some of the situation that probability may be the mean chance of the selected one of the particular individual population 
so that probability may be different. There are some situations that equal probability, equal chance. So this is simple random. Random sample mean is already you know the random sample mean like here just arbitrarily choose the sample from that population and also the equal chance. So member from population are selected in such a way that each individual member in the population has an equal chance of being selected. So this and then probability sample may be some of the situation that sample some of the individual members get a high chance of selected. So the probability is not equal. So that situation may be because that's that individual member has some high chance, higher probability. So that situation that probability is not equal. So we call this probability sample. So in this section, we are going to discuss that six important sampling method. So first random sampling method and second one systematic sampling method and third one stratified random sampling method and fourth one cluster sampling method and next convenience sampling method and finally multi-stage sampling method. So actually in this case maybe you can easily understand through the chart this random just we are going to select the random result and second systematic so in this case just we are going to select the sample in a systematic order and that was stratified so in this case first we split our population for different different structure then we just randomly select the sample and for the cluster and also in this case we first we have to uh, divide some cluster point in the population uh, later okay we will discuss later briefly and convenience and multi stage and also actually in this case uh, I'll, I'll provide some um, pictures so you can easily understand through the pictures so hopefully uh, i believe maybe you can easily understand that the pictures which is very helpful for understanding the sampling method this random sampling the selection so that each individual member has an equal chance being selected so randomly select the sample so but nowadays we have um, i think most of the statistical packages statistical software has guessed this option we can generate the random numbers but initially maybe i think 40 years back we have some uh, random generator generated random numbers we have some standard method but in this case i will not introduce that method uh, that's why everybody uses statistical packages or statistical software uh, even though maybe you can use excel also you, you can use um, that generate random numbers so this random sample systematic sample so in this case this we are going to select the sample in a systematically order so for example select some starting point and then select every kth element for example in this case in this picture uh, we select every fifth person as sample in the population so this type we call systematic sampling so just in this case we select the sample in systematic order next stratified random sampling so subdivide the population into at least two different subgroups that share the same characteristic then to sample from each subgroup so at least two sub subgroup so in this case that is we call structure so maybe that's three or four or five or six or whatever so at least two or more than two then after the selected sample from each structure so for example in this case just we divided the population as women group and men group then we select that sample sample from um, each structure so this type uh, we call that is stratified random sampling cluster samplings so divide the population area into section or cluster randomly selects some of those clusters so it's all numbers from clusters so in this case you first we 
is split that uh, your population is on cluster point. Then after consider all individuals on particular cluster. So randomly selected clusters. And for example, in this case, yes, we consider uh, 32 states in US. So just you know, then those are just every state in this case cluster point. Then just randomly pick that three clusters, five, sixteen, and twenty-eight, and interview all voters. So this type sampling is cluster sampling. Convenience sampling. So convenience means just in this case, just particularly choose some particular groups. So for example, at the annual stockholders meeting, survive is contacted for all of you attend. So this type is just convenience sampling. So just can be the particular groups. If the interviewer was to contact a survive at a shopping center early in the morning on even day, the people that he or she would interview would be limited to those given their given time, which would not represent the views of all members of society in such area. So in this case, you actually just which select the same this particular group. So I, I, I mean, maybe you can easily understand through that picture. So in this case, yes, we, we are going to select first two those people as a sample. Okay, so this is just because this can be a sample. So state sampling so multi-state sampling mean just collect the data by using some combination of basic sampling method so that mean uh, we used uh, some random sampling and certified sampling and uh, uh, cluster sampling so that situation we call this multi-state sampling so in multi-state sample design four are selected as sampling different stages and each stage might use different method of sampling. So in this case, this situation we call multi-stage sampling. You can easily understand through that this video. I uh, hopefully everybody understand this first section of our presentation. And also maybe continuously, uh, I'm going to explain every statistics section so this just is starting so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and thank you for watching thanks for everybody and see you on next video and also again don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you thank you see you